anything now about like how how you would get involved in in this mm. job from from outside mm -hmm. you know I mean, it's a totally different way you would do it i don't know if it's a lot easier if it's a lot harder or what um but i think just from like a how to do it standpoint i think just kind of going back to that thing we were saying earlier is just up a bunch of songs like find some people who also like to make up songs find people who are I would try to find people who who you like doing it with more than people who you think are really good at it. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're trying to find the most famous person you can get in a room with. Yeah. It's not it's not the most helpful way because you're just those 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 are, those opportunities will avail themselves when it's time for you mm -hmm. to be. In Hey, I'm Lauren Lucas. I'm obsessed with learning and I live for true authentic connection. I'm a wife, a working mom, professional singer songwriter, and an instructor of songwriting at my alma mater, Belmont University. You could say that life's a little full. I'm always looking for a way to sneak in some me time with great friends, good food, and meaningful conversation. Here we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the wonderful. My guests include well-known recording artists, hit songwriters, film directors, wellness coaches, and creative entrepreneurs. Plus, we throw in a delicious beverage, an easy weekend recipe. Think of it like happy hour, but better. I'm Lauren Lucas. This is The Happiest Hour. It's the happiest hour when I'm with you. It's the happiest hour. Let's raise our glasses to doing this crazy life. Keeping it real can't get much better As long as I'm with you It's the happiest hour Oh, a quick P.S. My plan is to bring you a full season of the happiest hour. But let's be honest, as a busy working toddler mom, work-life balance, at least for me, can be a challenge sometimes. So I might skip a week here and there. Here's what that means. No matter how you enjoy the happiest hour, whether it's through the YouTube live video or through your favorite podcast app, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the latest episode. That way, you won't miss a thing. Today, my guest is Grammy-nominated hit songwriter Jay Knowles. You've heard Jay's songs performed by some of your absolute favorite artists. We're talking legends like George Strait, Alan Jackson, uh, Harry Connick Jr., Charlie Worsham, Lainey Wilson, the list goes on and on. So let's jump right in. Okay, so um, I'm curious, song that's been cut or not cut, mm -hmm. what is a song that you are, is there a song in your catalog you are proudest of writing, whether other people have heard it or not? Um, probably there is. It kind of varies from day to day and uh, from time to time. There's one I wrote that I don't know if anyone else has ever really heard or particularly likes that I like a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's called, um, what's it called? It's called Liquor Store. And it just kind of has a bunch of repeating lines and things. And it's really interesting to me, but I don't know that it would be interesting to other people okay. who aren't me. Yeah. Which is like the total opposite of like what this job is, is to make a song that like all of country music listening in America right. will love. This is not that. This is a song that's almost written specifically for my interests in what can you accomplish with a song without doing too much. Okay. So I really like it that way. So kind of, if I'm understanding correctly, you're proud of it coming from like a craftsman perspective. Yeah, is that yeah, like, yeah like I had this idea. I was like, can I pull this off? Yeah, and yeah. then I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, that's awesome. But I don't think like Morgan mm -hmm. Wallen's gonna record it or mm -hmm. George Strait or any of those kind of people because it's too I mean it's still country music and it talks about liquor stores and trucks and things and all the country music things. So far it sounds like a hit. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I could be wrong too, because yeah. I have been wrong um, once. Maybe once many times about which songs of mine people are gonna like and there's a another song that I'm I'm proud of also would be on that list that people some people have heard who have heard it. Is called Love You, mm -hmm. and me and uh, Trent Summer wrote that. Well, and it was and, a uh, hit for, uh, hit Jack, for yeah, Jack, Ingram. Jack Ingram, yeah, yeah, and uh, 
and it's the kind of kind of smart ass and cleverness mm -hmm. that I enjoy participating in. But Trent and I wrote that song and we thought it was hilarious and we had a fun time writing it. And then and this is back when you would do your we made a work tape on a cassette, like that's how long ago it was. It's like the middle two thousand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um and we made it and then it was on the bottom of Trent's little gym bag that he kept all the songs in. And for like a year, we didn't play it for anybody. We just thought it was hilarious, fun for us. Yeah, yeah. And then Trent was getting toward the end of his publishing, the term of his contract. And I think he maybe hadn't turned in enough songs. Yeah. Or, so he couldn't want to get paid. He had <laughs> but let, me, let me reach the yeah, bottom like, of the he's barrel like, here. He's like, what do I got? I can turn in just like get credit. <laughs> and he played it, uh, that song for Kim Wiggins, uh, who uh, was, a, was her, his song player at the time, mm -hmm. you know, one of the best. Uh, and I would, I thought that before this, but now I obviously believe it forever. Um, and he played her that song, and she was like, "Would you write that?" No, she's like, "You idiot! Like that's a hit. Yeah, go demo that now, <laughs> and I will get it cut." That's and awesome. We did, and it did, and yeah. Know, so, what do I know? Yeah, I don't, you know. So yeah, it's just a, well, that's the whole music business. Nobody knows. Nobody until knows, it and then everybody's certain. That's right. Everybody, that's right. everybody, that's right. everybody yeah. has has twenty twenty. Yeah, hindsight. So, we've written several times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, even more, more than, than several times, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. over the years. Um, and I would, I certainly would say that I have learned from every co-writer that I've been in a room with. I have learned something mm -hmm. from them. But there are a handful of writers that I've written with who I consider, like, really my songwriting teachers, like, on a mentor level, whether they know it or not. And you, I count you as one of those. Okay. And I'm curious, I mean, you've been doing this most of your life, mm -hmm. you, and you grew up around music mm -hmm. with your dad mm -hmm. being a guitar player and writer as well? Somewhat, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so obviously you've been doing this a long time. I'm just curious, what what do you know about yourself that, that you would say are your greatest strengths that you bring in as a writer? Um, it's funny you say that being about teaching, I was thinking about this, like, um, I'll say this, like the thing I think I've always had that's made me be good at this to whatever degree I am is that from the very beginning of learning how to do this, I've always felt like I almost got it. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of have like the confidence of someone who almost has it, but I also have the sort of curiosity of someone who doesn't yet okay. so i kind of and i feel that way like all these years like i always felt like man i'm about to lock this thing i'm about to be the best i'm about to i got it all if i could just i need to and thing and maybe today and it also it's this this weird mix and so um i think that's all that that whatever that combination is mm. of of because you you gotta like it's weird like why would you like show up in a room and say I'm gonna make up some stuff about people I love and everyone's gonna want to sing it and listen <laughs> right. to it like that's pretty arrogant right right in a lot of ways so you gotta have that confidence but also if you're too confident then you just blob a bunch of crap and yeah. unless you're lucky so what yeah so you also gotta be like super insecure about oh is this thing and why am I who well that's what I'm wondering is you say that like do you do you feel like it's a touch of imposter syndrome or or no not that's not what you're saying. Um, sometimes, some days it's all a posture mm -hmm. but I think it's more just like, I, I feel like I'm just, it's like just around the corner mm -hmm. is just, is the thing, it's the thing I need. And as soon as I get around that corner and I find it and then I'm like, oh, you know, it, all, all learning anything does is teach you what you don't know. Yeah. If yeah. You, if, you, if you're learning it the right way. And so I feel like, you know, I've been just say since some version of it since I was six wow. and, uh, Still, and just like, wow. yeah. You know, and awesome. Well, I'm hearing you say you're you're a lifelong learner. Of, yeah, yeah. of the craft. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing that's fun. You know, now there's you know the people a lot of people I write with are young people who are but and there's a lot of things. How do I say this in a nice way? I won't. There's a lot of things they just don't know. <laughs> yeah, because they just haven't found it out yet. Right. Because they hadn't been doing it long. But there's a lot of things that they do know. That I don't know, mm. and uh, so I'm constantly trying to steal things. Some of it's like 
the cruel ways the cruel kids say cruel things. Mm-hmm. Some natural but it, instinct. But it's but it's too. more just like uh, the kind of the assemblages of songs and influences that they picked up mm-hmm. that that I don't that are in a, in a reass- reassemb- yeah reassembled it in a yeah. different way. You know? Yeah. And and that's fun. To, to kind of, that's that makes that makes that learning kind of go bo- both hanging out with like. Roy Burke and guys like that mm-hmm. who were just like masters, and you know mm-hmm. John Scott Sherrill and Bob DePiro and people who were my sort of forwards, but then looking backwards, time wise, you know, mm-hmm. looking forward, I don't know. Uh, we're learning both from both directions, yeah. And yep. so that's 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 the thing I like about being sort of the, in the, that middle age mm-hmm. that I am now. Yeah, I'm kind of you know, everybody except people who are in my own age are very boring to me. Yeah, we're, it's, we're it's, it's, still it's, it's, it's it's like yeah, still from the middle ages. No, they, they, it is. It's very they, like, they listen to all the same records, and I listen to yeah, yeah. it's uh, there's there's a group of I, I won't say anything to the artists here, but everybody's like so into these guys. And I'm like, oh, I had those same records, man. I know, I get it. Yeah, you know. But if somebody's like ten years, fifteen years younger than me, I'm I'm fascinated by what they do mm-hmm. or older. But, mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. So, anyway, I get that. I know. understand that. So speaking of writing with artists, mm-hmm. sometimes we're put in rooms with really green artists or, mm-hmm. or young songwriters. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, what are you, what would you say you consistently see maybe one or two things that mm-hmm. are like dead giveaways that you're with a young beginner writer? Um, I think a lot of times, I think, you know, they, they, they always say like, you know, you have to write a whole bunch of really crappy songs before you can write good songs. Mm-hmm. And, I think the reason you have to, I don't think you, I don't know if it's necessarily you have to write a bunch of crappy songs, but you have to write so many songs that the song you're writing today is not the song that you're going to live or die on. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when somebody's new, they sometimes will just hold on too tight to mm-hmm. a song and care too much. I mean, I always care, but they care, they care so much about every, and so you'll yeah. get halfway through. And so you lose sort of like the loose joy of like, this is fun. This could be cool. Let's mm-hmm. try this. Remember that? The messiness and, yeah. of the and if it, experimentation. If it, yeah. And if it, it's all terrible, so what? We'll write one tomorrow. Right, you know, right. It's like, but, but if you've only written 15 or 60 or 100 songs uh-huh. and you need one for a thing, and if you don't, duh, and hey, what? Like that, 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 uh, oh no, oh yeah, the pressure that you put on yourself to be awesome today yeah. can, will shut you down. And then you start overthinking that's first, and I don't know if I would, and a thing, and uh, and uh, mm-hmm. is anybody, and I already, and somebody, it's like, you, you start sort of, you see that kind of editing, and you're trying to look at a thing that's not finished, and the thing that, uh, you know, you know, our, our pal Adam Wright, and I, when we figured out several years ago, like, if you just kind of like, take any song, but we've been doing this a long time, so if you just kind of take any song, and just kind of shake it long enough, It'll eventually get like pretty good, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. But you gotta keep all of the different parts wet, yeah, you yeah, know? fluid, and yeah, and willing to be. But, but once it's yeah, once it's molded. dry, if you start then start trying to pick apart, and it just so yeah, I think oh, that's that's yeah. really interesting. Um, you know, is that a metaphor? I, yeah, yeah, sure. It's a, it's a, yeah, <laughs> sure. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I like I, it. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's so I think it's that thing, just just kind of. Be cool with it. Just hang out. Make mm-hmm. a song. It'll be fine. Tomorrow, make another one. Mm-hmm. Like if you could, the sooner you can get to that spot, mm-hmm. um, and really caring about the song. It's not the same thing as not giving a crap. Right, right. But it's the same thing of like, let's just make this one be the best it's going to be today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to me, the coolest songs always are those that are just sort of like their own version of a thing mm-hmm. that became a thing. I, I have found that that is true of life in general. Do you yeah. feel the same oh, way? Yeah. Like, yeah. Whether it's music business, whether it's songwriting specifically, whether it's artistry specifically, whether it's relationships outside of music mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Like if you hold on to anything too tightly, you're, you're strangling yeah. it to yeah. death and yeah. it's going to run away. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it is. It's just like, it's like it's all like a little bird, mm-hmm. you know, hold on that little bird. And if you do this, obviously you're going to do that. Yeah. But, um, but it's much, much easier just to sort of let it come to you. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, and like you said, believe you're going to write yeah. hundreds more hundreds. If, you, if you stick it with is, it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It's, it really is a, uh, 
I mean, they, you know, there's a, it's just about caring a lot about it that day, about that one, with the knowledge that also there'll be another one tomorrow mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoying that process. Yes. That's, that's the real trick is enjoying the doing, the, of, the it. doing of it because that's the whole. That's what, what would you say, do you have a particular process that you find Okay, I might do it different. You know, I don't know that anyone writes mm -hmm. a song exactly the same way every time. Mm -hmm. But is do you typically land on kind of a pattern of how you approach a song when you're starting a new, a fresh idea? I don't. I don't. I wish I did more. It might make my job easier, but it'd be worse too. I don't. I think it, it's it's more. I guess if there's anything, I kind of always try to find like a reason why this is going to be a song mm -hmm. if that makes any sense and it, are, is it typically once you already have an idea uh, <laughs> it's more or uh, do you do you write songs without having a clue what the title or hook's going to be and you kind of find it once you're in sometimes, sometimes. you do okay. yeah yeah but it's good to have but it, but it's, but there has to be an idea if there's if you don't have a thing you have to have an idea mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i you know and I'm probably more old-timey than some, but it's, you know, some songs now, they just they feel like they just call whatever the last word of the chorus is. Right, right. And, and, and I, I need a little more than that to go on. Yeah. Um, I, it's hard for me to kind of, like once I know what, like, the emotional point of a song's existence is, then I can generally get to the end of it pretty fast. Because mm -hmm. then you're just kind of explaining how you feel. Mm -hmm. And then you're making it rhyme, and you do this long enough, you know, it's like, Making crap rhyme is easy, right. you know. That's that's the hard part at the beginning. Especially today, that's another new trend of yeah, the last yeah, twenty yeah. years. Yeah, I mean, like bending this, words to rhyme, yeah, just, however you need them to. Yeah, that's which like, I'm, that's a little. I, I'm a little too old school for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I have. I get I get kind of antsy sometimes, and I'm like, oh, that's at and bat, not yeah, right. at and, and ham. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not knocking it. I mean, yeah, I, think, it I think it definitely does work, but I, it's but, just not. But when it doesn't work. That's right. You go. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like chalk, nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but getting whatever that thing is, where what is like, what is the song about? Mm -hmm. That to me is the thing. And once I once you find figure that out, like why is that song? You know, sometimes I hear songs, I want to say things, but if you're like, I don't, I don't think that's really a song. Mm. It's words and they rhyme, and it's got a tune. But it's not really about a thing. It's just mm. a, a, a list of a descriptions of stuff, mm, mm -hmm. and that's not to me that I don't. When that's the, the separate from a feeling, I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I can't help. I don't. I'm because I'm lost in my body. Words. Are, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So tell us. Um, you have. I would call it a new thing. A Substack mm -hmm. newsletter mm -hmm. called Song Friends. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about what it is, why you created it, mm -hmm. and what, what your hope for it is. Um, it's what, let me first say, mm -hmm. it, is, it is one of my favorite newsletters that I subscribe to. And I look Yay. forward to every, I was about to say episode, but every installment, I guess you call it. installment, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm still kind of experimenting with what it is. I mean, the, the idea is that over the years, of writing songs and hanging out with songwriters and living this. I mean, there's a, I mean, in, one of my favorite things about this job is it's, you're always having conversations with people as a part of writing songs mm -hmm. about, sometimes you're talking about writing songs, sometimes you're talking about life, your kids, your family, your worldview, your things that happen, you're telling stories. And so you're, you're, if you're sort of, you're always learning about the world and friends and people and stuff as a result of having this job mm -hmm. in ways that I feel like if you worked at a bank, you're so busy talking about bank things mm -hmm. that you don't have time to be like, man, there's this girl in the third grade, you know, and like, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think bankers have those conversations at work, yeah. you know, whereas we do. That's a part, that's it's what a part do, of your yeah. job. It's like, oh, that reminds me of so-and-so and my dad had this thing and Oh geez, yeah. You know, we don't. That's, mm -hmm. you know, lawyers don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, on the clock at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the idea of the Substack is just, what are some things that I've learned about just life and how to approach it 
and art and how to approach that as a result of spending every day mm -hmm. for the last 25 years doing that. Yeah. Um, and so it's a thing, it's, you know, it's about songs, but it's not really only for songwriter people. It's for anybody who likes songs or likes making stuff up mm -hmm. or likes writing or painting or bricklaying or movies or, <laughs> you know, and as I go, I think I'm just, it's going to continue to sort of expand yeah. that thing, but still be at the core, like from the perspective of a guy who sits around every day and going like, that's weird. Mm -hmm. Make that love. How does that be? Oh, that rhymes, you know, yeah. with, with, a, with a group of people who, who are also do that as their way of, of living. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, so, but it's, it, it's awesome. And, and I love that I'll open up a, open up a new, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Is um, it issue? Issue. Yeah. Is we'll say issue. Okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah. It's all new stuff. Yeah. Open up a new issue. And because you're a songwriter and I, know you as a songwriter and it's called song friends i at first thought it was going to be more about like here's how to write a song mm -hmm. but it really is like it it's a lot about life and it's a lot about what goes into inspiring ideas that are going to eventually be a song mm -hmm. right? yeah or yeah. even some process but process that to your point doesn't always look like process yeah but it is our process yeah that's that's the that's <laughs> the thing i, re I remember was this is, I may talk about this at some point. I haven't talked about this with some song friends, but I may steal this thing I'm about to say. Uh, you heard I, it here first I, on Happiest Hour. I, that's right. <laughs> I went to a, uh, it was like a group of songwriters, went to like a songwriter retreat, and there was a guy who has, had kind of put it on, and he was, wanted, he was a lawyer who wanted to be a songwriter, mm -hmm. uh, trying to be as undescriptive as possible. I say this. <laughs> uh, and so he got us all there, and we were all writing songs together. We all knew each other. Uh, and he was there, he was going to write songs with different people, and he was, you know, kind of funding this deal in the publishing company. Um, and he had written out a schedule of, like, from 10, this is a thing, and this is the grouping, and these are the people and stuff, and it was in a little small town. Uh, so around, you know, 9 o'clock, all of us songwriter guys, we and, and gals, we all kind of woke up, Went downstairs, went down the street. There's a little bagel shop. And we were all sitting there drinking coffee and then making fun of each other and asking questions about things. And did y'all go see the thing? And mm -hmm. well, how old are your kid? Uh, all those kind of things. And then the lawyer guy rolls in about 9.45 and we were supposed to start at 10. And at about 9.50, he starts, <laughs> his leg starts seizing. <laughs> you see, he's like, you know, and he doesn't want to say anything. But and And then we start talking and then we're doing it. And then... Around you know a little after ten, people just start sort of organically just like peeling off like oh no oh, yeah we got to think we're at the thing and and then uh, and then it was down to him and I think that was my time to write with him and somebody else and I just leaned over and said I said it's gonna be fine <laughs> I said I don't know if you saw what was happening here but, says, but we have already started writing our song today uh -huh. that was it that's uh -huh. what that looks like that's what sitting around. That is the process. Yeah. You know, that's sort of, if we were track runners, that was everybody stretching and running a few laps mm -hmm. and, you know, doing all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And we just like, but, you know, it took him a little while. And then I was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're all right. Song. Again, don't, yeah. don't hold it so Yeah, quickly, exactly. Right? It's like, the thing, oh, we got to no, know. It's like, uh, yeah. yeah. And because um, most of it, it's all, you know, that's the, the thing is that almost every song you write every day is practice mm. for the next one mm -hmm. or the next one's or the one you know never you never you never know which one you practice and which one counts yeah hey, so so it's yeah that's so true know. so true well and i also love i mean you have some of the you are cream of the crop and you have fellow cream of the crop <laughs> so, anyway <laughs> whatever um who who read song friends and then mm -hmm. contribute, you know, in the, you got a yeah, lot of people yeah. in the comment. I mean, people like Luke Dick, people like Adam Wright. Mm -hmm. people, I mean, just really top notch hit writers. Yeah. No, that's fun to see well, kind of them fun. chime in. Yeah. And, uh, and there's, there's one guy who, who, uh, who's a, a country, like a country, he's a country artist and he wrote in a bunch of stuff. And I was like, hadn't, I didn't, hadn't known him. And he was like, it was very like wow. This is it was it was it was out of character for the character he plays on TV. Oh, oh you know what I mean. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like 
Uh -huh. You know, he wasn't a country boy. He was like, you, and you realize, and it was a good reminder of that a lot of times behind the facade of, mm -hmm. I'm a cramper, it's somebody's going, hmm, well, actually, and da -da 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 -da. you know, there's a lot of smartness yeah. behind yeah. The, uh, the fake dumbness. It's not fake dumbness, but just, you know, there's a, it's a smaller portion of their personality. That's right, yeah. And, uh, and underneath that is somebody who really is thinking a lot about, mm -hmm. you know, which those songs are going to be like. Yeah. You know. Well, and also a testament to how um, how entertaining and valuable the Substack is because people are sharing it. Yeah. Others. Yeah. So no, that's, that's it's fun. It's, it's really fun cool. to kind of you know kind of help build out the community yeah. in ways as it gets more diffuse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you've had number one hit songs by, uh, I mean, some legendary. So you've had hits by George Strait, mm -hmm. Alan Jackson, Harry Connick Jr. You have a Laney Wilson cut in the last couple, last year, I'd say, yeah, exactly. uh, which is, is excellent. Um, I mean, and, the, and Jack Ingram, I mean, the list goes on. So what does it feel like? A couple things I mm -hmm. want to know. Mm -hmm. Like your experience, and I know you would do this whether you got a cut or not. I believe that mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. uh, is that fair to say? I mean, you love what you do. Oh yeah, no. That I, I, I've any amount of like whatever, whatever, whatever success. success or money, all that stuff. It's just like to maintain my lifestyle of waking up every morning and going drinking and making, coffee, coffee and, and making that song playing. Your yeah, yeah, playing guitars <laughs> with friends. And okay, doing but that so that's but, that's that really is it. Oh, yeah. and I and I know that yeah, yeah. about you. But that's and, I, it. and I know yeah. I know that that's true. And also, I still want to know, what does it feel like when you find out you have a George Strait cut, mm -hmm. you hear it for the first time, they have gone in and recorded it, mm -hmm. then you hear it on the radio, then, you know, Alan Jackson, that was a Grammy-nominated yeah. mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. you, you have a Grammy nomination. What are some of those, what is that experience like? Each, each of those little... It's, yeah, it's, I was a kind of, there's a couple... Stories come to mind. I remember the first thing I ever had that was like on the radio was uh, Montgomery Gentry. Was mm -hmm. kind of and I remember getting in my car, and it was you know, it was not like a big hit, but it was on the radio. Some, and I, but I, and I just got in the car and I turned the car on, and it was playing, and I recognized it as like a thing that I had done, <laughs> and but that was it. And then I realized. And I saw it was like there, I had like a, a CD or I guess it was a cassette in the car of like one of my songs, like a demo, which I would never like want to ride around and listen to my own demos. Mm -hmm. And so I almost like reached to push eject on the thing. And I was like, oh, oh wait, that's, that's the radio. Yeah. That's, that's my song. Yeah. You know, it was just like, it was, you're so in the thing. Um, and I mean, did you, then, did you like pull over to listen to the rest of it? Were you just like butterfly? I mean, or was it, was, it like? No, no, this is it, what yeah, I've been working it was, for. Yeah, this is, this is, it was, it this was is, weird. I think they, they had made a video for it, I think. Maybe that was the, the George Strait song. I remember, like, uh, because I grow, grew up in... No, they didn't make a video for that song. Uh, George Strait song, they made a music video for it or some kind of performance video or something. And I remember, like, that was when it felt more real to me because I grew mm -hmm. up, like, MTV era, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. watching videos just on MTV. And so to have a music video and CMT, that yeah. was you know, when I was growing sure. up. Um, and so to have like a music video of a song on CMT and have George Strait standing there and like a, it's my, his mouth is moving and he's saying words yeah. like, that Odie and I made up. Yeah. Like that was like the most, that was the first time I was like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm doing, this is. I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, this is happening. This and is, what about a Grammy nom? I mean, how, how does. How does that feel is kind of a trite question, but how yeah, does yeah. it feel? And what, I mean, what, I don't know. Tell me about the me the moment you realized you were being nominated for a Grammy. Um, I think, I mean, it wasn't really a thing I'd even thought of. And Adam just called me up on the phone because they were having, I guess they had like a TV show or something, mm -hmm. or some kind of announcement thing. And and Adam just called me. Congratulations. I was like, thanks. For what? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it was. It Adam was, being your co-writer for the yeah, song. Yeah, Adam Wright. Yeah. And, um, but I remember, uh, it wasn't, it just, again, it just, it, it was exciting because it felt, that felt more like 
I was a part of like the larger music community mm-hmm. of things. And that's what going to the show uh, was fun. It was a very, it was a, it was a, it was a good sort of ego builder buster kind of a thing <laughs> because it was, uh, you know, Adam and, and I and Shannon and, and my wife, Catherine, we were all there together. Um, and, um, it was this weird thing of like half of the time you were like a fancy person. It was like, oh, Mr. Knowles, here you go, you go to the thing. And then as soon as like Sting walked by, they would just like <laughs> shove you out of the way and you were just like trash. Yeah, like, yeah. Ah, you don't got it. Here comes Sting, Mr. Uh-huh. Mr. Sting. And then, and then, and then he's like, da, 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 da. like, oh, Elton John's piano, watch out. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. and like you just didn't matter at all. Yeah. And then you were important again. And it was sort of this weird, you know, we would be at Staples Center and we sat on the floor eating seafood. California Pizza Kitchen pizza because there, <laughs> there was there was a, there was an area where you were allowed to eat fancy food, but we weren't oh, on that list. You weren't fancy you weren't, enough you for that. Okay, enough. I gotcha. So, um, but so it was, but it was just sort of like. But then, you know, I mean, Adam and I both we were in the restroom, and Quincy Jones was in the restroom too, and we're like, that's Quincy Jones. Quincy that's Jones Quincy. also got a pee. Yes, yeah, right. Everybody. And <laughs> and, uh, and so you know, it was just a that was the thing that you were like you felt like you were sort of a part of it, but you also got a sense that. They, they didn't let you get too much of a big head like mm-hmm. that, that was mm-hmm. also you know? <laughs> yeah yeah so that was that was the that was the funnest piece of that it was just sort of getting to be sort of a, a fan of just the of the of the thing mm-hmm. you know as someone who sort of you know songwriters were generally if it all goes well we're pretty uh nondescript <laughs> and unfamous <laughs> and unconcerned with that stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um yeah. Um, and if it was, you know, like like the country music awards is stuff is just people you know, mm-hmm. just because you know it's not because you know just because we're we're all just folks. Yeah. Generally, in this thing, there's only like three people who are a big deal. Yeah. And <laughs> like Dolly Parton is like would make everybody melt. Right. Everyone else is just like, hey, there's Luke. Whichever Luke you're talking about, well, hey, well, you know, yeah. It's like they're, yeah. they're not they're famous, but they're not they're just dudes. Yeah. To us. Yeah. You know. So. Yep. I don't know. So I know um, you've mentioned in one of your um, song friends newsletters, I believe, that you wrote about your daughter graduating mm-hmm. from college, mm-hmm. and I, I think I, I think I remember you saying you weren't super big on giving advice, mm-hmm. and and I'm also going to ask you for some advice, and wondering if you would share, if you have any advice for people who want to pursue songwriting as their main gig, mm-hmm. who, who maybe are starting out on that path already. Do you have any words of wisdom or encouragement or advice? That you could give. Um, it's like I don't know anything now about like how how you would get involved in in this mm. job from from outside. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's a totally different way you would do it. I don't know if it's a lot easier, if it's a lot harder, or what. Um, but I think just from like a how to do it standpoint think just kind of going back to that thing we were saying earlier is just make up a bunch of songs like find some people who also like to make up songs find people who are I would try to find people who who you like doing it with more than people who you think are really good at it because mm-hmm. and maybe that's the secret of my lack of success but I've always just sort of like I like you let's make up songs as opposed to you're going to be a star. Yeah. You know, I mean, or, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to find the most famous person you can get in a room with. Yeah. It's not, it's not the most helpful way. Cause you're just, those, 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 are, those opportunities will avail themselves when it's time for you mm-hmm. to be in those opportunities, uh, especially early on. I think just doing you need it, the comfort of somebody that you can really be vulnerable with right. and just say anything. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I'll like say my best, my best songs, are all songs that I've written with people who I also had already previously written 40 songs with mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. or done a thing with or, you know, whatever, or whatever you know, where you're just like, well, I don't, you know, it's like why, I mean, you know, part of why Adam and Wright and I write good songs together is because we've written a bunch of crappy songs together. Mm-hmm. And we also have written some of our favorite songs together, mm-hmm. but we also, some of my favorite songs that I didn't write are ones that he wrote mm-hmm. and I've, I like to think vice versa. He says so. He might just be lying. <laughs> I bet it's true. But you know, so there's a kind of like a mixture, mm-hmm. and, and 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 the best songs that he and I write, and that other people I've written songs with like that, uh, 
that there's things in those songs that sound like something I would say that Adam mm-hmm. came up with mm-hmm. and vice versa. And also, uh, um, if you, uh, if you were, if you know me, you'll hear those songs and you'll think it's a song I wrote. Mm-hmm. If you know Adam, you'll hear it and think it's a song he wrote. Mm-hmm. And that kind of is that, that, that's that best thing. And you only get that by writing with someone who you know, you've done it a bunch or you feel comfortable with, like you say. So I think, Starting out is just finding those people, but also when someone isn't that for you, that's fine too. You don't yeah. have to write songs with somebody forever. Just that's right. It, just move on. It's like boys and girls, you know. Same. So yeah. There's a, there's there's those, the, that 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 I wouldn't continue that that metaphor too far, <laughs> but but that idea of like you're just there to meet people and make friends and mm-hmm. do things and make songs and move on and yeah and all that and uh, the earlier you can kind of do that and and be a good you because you, that's a lot of so much of writing songs with people is learning how to listen to them mm. as much as your own self mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. yeah and again, and again that's some of that's your personality and are you that kind of person but a lot of it's just practice yeah yeah agreed awesome jay thank you so much thank you. um actually sorry one okay. more question yes. a question that i'm asking all my guests okay if it were all gone tomorrow. Mm-hmm. The the ability to write songs, mm-hmm. the demos, the cuts, the Grammy noms. Mm-hmm. What would you want to leave behind, or what would you want people to know? It's funny. I, I feel I feel like every morning I wake up and like all oh, that's gone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm having to relearn everything every day from scratch. A lot of days, um, but I, you know, really, it's just like being a dad is kind of. <laughs> don't let, I hope my kids don't see this because then they'll get cocky. But I like that. I just yeah. like that. I like that and being a good friend to my friends. Yeah. You know, that's that's it. Hey. Okay. Just, you know. That's powerful if stuff. You, if right you need there. something, call Jay. You know, yeah. He'll either help or get Laugh in the way. At you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Jay, thank you so much for being my guest today on Happiest Hour and um, sharing your, your thoughts and your wit and your wisdom. And please check out Jay. Uh, thejnoles.com. You can also check out his own records on Spotify and wherever you stream music. Um, one of my personal favorites is a song he wrote called The Turtle. Oh, yes. And uh, you can find that on one of his records on Spotify. Um, and please subscribe to his Substack, Song Friends. How can people find that? Uh, you can go to Substack and search J. Knowles, or you can go to my website and just click on that. There you go. And you know what? It'll be in show notes as well. So, um, so find Jay on the interwebs, enjoy his music and enjoy, um, the music you may not even know he writes, uh, that are, are, that's playing on your radio right now. Thanks for being here. Oh, that was so much fun. I wish I could talk to my guests for hours. If you want more from the happiest hour too, make sure you head over to laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour for the show notes, recipes, and products mentioned in the episodes. And you can learn how to access Happiest Hour bonus content. Oh, and if you're looking for a way to make true and authentic connections with other people who are music lovers, who want to carry on the conversations that are started on the Happiest Hour episodes, and who are friendly and supportive, join my exclusive online community. It's absolutely free, and we would love to have you. I run fan contests there from time to time. I do free live stream concerts. The link is waiting for you at laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour. Until next time.